Is alcohol good or bad for you? And the answer is yes and yes. Drinking a modest amount of alcohol does have numerous health benefits. But a major new study says no amount of alcohol is good for your overall health, not even that cheeky glass of red wine. What should you believe in? Hi, my name is Paris Chopra. I'm founder of Ninti. Our mission is to distribute cheat codes for life so that people can rapidly accelerate in their health, wealth, and wisdom. We do this by distilling science and collective wisdom into actionable information that anybody can act upon starting right now. Today, I want to discuss how do you make sense of conflicting scientific claims. You must have come across multiple contradictory statements out there. Sometimes people say coffee is good for health. Sometimes it's not good for health. Say some supplements like turmeric is bad for liver or it's uh, good for something else. So when there is this world of conflicting information, uh, how can you trust and what can you really make sense of? So with that, uh, one really good cheat code is to consider this idea or this mental model uh, levels of evidence. It's also called hierarchy of evidence. It's essentially a pyramid that uh, reinforces the fact that your level of belief into any claim uh, should be commensurate to the level of evidence that backs up the claim. It sounds simple. It's of course a challenge to really go out and do a very rigorous job of finding out what amount of evidence is backing up uh, someone's claim. So it's essentially a hack to break down a scientific claim to see what kind of evidence is backing up that scientific claim. At the bottom of that pyramid is um, uh, what you can call as animal studies or even in lab petri dish studies. Uh, in these kind of experiments, researchers do something on uh, animals like mice, pig, or sometimes they do things just on petri dishes in the lab. Uh, let's say you're testing a new drug and you give that drug to uh, some mice and they end up displaying or exhibiting a certain kind of beneficial behavior. Then uh, that news is gently picked up in a variety of outlets. So I'm claiming that now we have found a big breakthrough. Uh, you may already know that, but most of these uh, models or most of these animal models do not really translate very well onto humans, which means that uh, most of the researches that are done on animals or done in petri dishes, uh, they have a high failure rate when it comes to ultimately coming and benefiting uh, humans. This is why even though every second day we have a breakthrough research uh, or breakthrough finding in different areas, different diseases, more often the ultimate uh, uh, end impact in humans ends up being very, very slow. So the miracle cancer drug generally is just miraculous in a very particular animal and also probably in a very, very particular strain of animal. The next level of evidence is what's called an expert opinion. When it comes to scientists, scientists are generally careful about the claims they are making. But you have to understand that scientists are humans like you and me and they have uh, very similar biases and which means they can end up sometimes uh, consciously or not consciously end up exaggerating certain things, ending up reading too much into the data and so on. Just a simple example, let's say you get good sleep after you drink something like turmeric milk. Now, you may end up giving that advice to all your friends. You may say I have a very strong opinion because uh, I drink turmeric milk like each night and I get really good sleep. But there can be so many confounding effects. Uh, you might be getting good sleep because you have good dark curtains in your home. You might be getting good sleep because you exercise in the morning and you get tired by the evening. Or you might be getting good sleep. Uh, you live in a very quiet neighborhood. And the point of advice, help others. And if it doesn't generalize beyond one person, uh, then of course, it's not a useful advice. So very similarly, whenever you come across a scientist or an expert opinion on something, you have to always be curious whether it's an opinion or whether it's backed by any evidence. Uh, if it's not backed by evidence, you need to be very, very skeptical of it. One level above expert opinion is something which is called as observational study. So an observational study, uh, it's, it's very simple. I mean, as the name sounds, you observe what's happening and you try to guess what might be making that happen. So very simple example, let's say you observe a group of people uh, where different people drink different amount of alcohol and you end up tracking how long they live or how healthy they are. And um, surprisingly enough, when researchers did that, they actually end up finding that uh, people who drink 
moderate amount of alcohols end up living longer than people who drink no alcohol or people who drink uh, a lot of alcohol now this might lead you to sort of see that it might be possible that a little bit of alcohol is actually beneficial for health and that's how a lot of media ends up spinning uh, these findings but uh, that's not true there could be so many just like the turmeric uh, milk example there can be so many confounder effects common factors that could be driving both uh, the drinking of alcohol and uh, moderate alcohol and the beneficial effects in this particular case for example uh it is likely that people who drink moderate amount of alcohol people who are able to stop at one drink they have high amount of self discipline and the same self discipline uh, also carries into different aspects self discipline into nutrition self discipline into exercise so it is possible that people who are able to stop at one drink uh they have uh, just better exercise they eat better but this does not mean that if you drink no alcohol and you have high amount of self discipline and say let's say you exercise and you have good diet uh it doesn't mean that if you start drinking alcohol it will uh, start impacting your health positively um because you know this is simply what may you may have heard earlier correlation is not causation and in this case alcohol and little bit of uh, say better health outcomes are correlated but not causative so how can you tease about correlation and causation Uh, well, the gold standard for teasing apart these two things is something that's called randomized control trial. Now, randomized control trial is very simple in concept. Uh, let me demonstrate you with uh, like a very trivial example you can do at home. Let's say you have two pots where you have put the same seed. You give them very similar amount of water every day. They get similar amount of sunshine. Now, in one plant you add fertilizer, and in another plant you don't add anything. You change just one factor. one has fertilizer another has no fertilizer and everything else remains the same now when you try to measure its growth and other parameters maybe you try to measure how green the leaves are or how healthy the plant looks how fast it grows now if there's any difference you observe between these two plants you can very safely attribute it to the fact that you added fertilizer into one and no fertilizer into second and this is what randomized control trial is where you are able to isolate the cause and effect by manipulating just one factor proactively and uh, this is how say covid vaccine was tested this is how most drugs are also tested where you have a population you split into two or multiple sort of categories and you give different dosages or no dosage to different groups and you observe what's impact on how long people live how uh, how much they are hospitalized and other outcomes you're interested in so randomized control trials are the in humans they are the gold standards of evidence when it comes to what you should believing in so look for randomized control trials in nutrition in social sciences in any aspect you are interested in uh, but there is one caveat even with randomized control trials it is possible that the population you're studying in um, is biased uh what i mean by bias is that it is possible that if you get a group of 100 people and split them into two say 50 50 uh that's fine but it is possible that the 100 people you got was uh just not representative of the entire population and this generally happens uh in fields like social sciences or psychology where many of the research randomized control trials are done on say uh psychology undergrads and uh what works for psychology undergrads does not end up working for the larger population because psychology undergrads come with a lot of background knowledge which others may not have uh this is called replication crisis and it is real um wherein a lot of good results that uh, uh psychologists have found out social scientists have found out is now not replicating when you do the same randomized control trial with some other population studies that examined dozens of published pharmaceutical papers managed to replicate the results of less than 25% of them and similar results have been found in other scientific disciplines a simple example of it is say you may have heard of this effect wherein will power is like a muscle it is in all pop psychology books but uh, it was done in a randomized controlled trials and they found out that will power sort of weird off if you use more of it but when it was replicated in other context in more populations it did not really sort of uh, replicate and that's a cause of concern because it means whenever you're reading a research you really want to read it from the perspective of whether it applies to you or not uh you are reading scientific research or claims to see whether it can benefit you or not and if the scientific claim doesn't replicate then it's obviously uh, not going to help you out 
So for that, uh, even with randomized control trials being the gold standard of science, there is even one level above it, which is stronger it, stronger than randomized control trials, and it's called uh, systematic analysis and meta reviews. What these sort of studies do is they aggregate a number of randomized control trials. So they would look at say hundreds of randomized control trials and find find out what is the common effect they all ended up getting. So even though one study might be biased in a certain way, it is likely if more studies are done, they might be biased in some different ways. And when you average them out, the bias more or less cancels. And what remains is a common effect that you can generalize with a lot more confidence than you can generalize one single study. In fact, meta-analysis and systematic reviews is how, say, we got a ton of confidence that uh, cigarettes and lung cancer are related, not just from a correlation point of view, uh, but from a causative point of view. And similarly, all our sort of wisdom such as exercise is helpful, it leads to longevity, it leads to less disease. All these are also a result of um, meta-analysis and systematic reviews and not just a single randomized controlled trials. Because systematic reviews are the highest levels of evidence, so that is why most government bodies, medical organizations derive their clinical guidelines from meta-analysis and systematic reviews. If there is a guidance from your uh, medical organization of government that you should be exercising, say, 180 minutes in a week, that comes from meta-analysis where it was found out that this amount of exercise is most beneficial uh, for, for health. So look out for systematic reviews and meta-analysis when you uh, are trying to find out whether a claim is uh, scientifically correct or not. Uh, I know this can be super confusing. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, this, this, you are not a scientist, you, but you want to rely on science. Uh, so if I were to just leave you with one thumb rule, I would have you remember that whenever you come across a scientific claim, uh, ask yourself, ask the person making the claim or read through the paper or article whether it was done on a randomized control trial with humans or not, and better still, whether you can find a meta-analysis and systematic review on it. Do not believe a lot of credence into any experiment or result found out in animal models, even if there's an expert opinion, and especially also if you find out an observational study where all the study did was to observe two things. Uh, in many cases, those are just correlated and um, not causative at all. And what you want, want to find out is the cause and effect. Because only if you are able to find a cause and effect can you apply that to your life and be guaranteed or at least have a high confidence that the effect will also follow. Otherwise, you'll end up just wasting time if you apply something which is just uh, correlated. Yeah, that's about it. And in the spirit of uh, what I started off with where our mission is to distribute cheat codes for life and help people take action on it, uh, I would leave you with a challenge. And your challenge is to find... Uh, three systematic reviews or meta-analysis and uh, study them and discuss them in our community. So go to ninti.com, join our community. The task is simple. Discuss three different systematic analysis and meta-reviews. Uh, you can do this by going to PubMed. PubMed is a repository of biological or uh, health-related articles. So you can type in the um, questions of your interest. Maybe you're interested in, say, uh, effects of sleep and some supplement, some food item or say health and exercise. And then uh, on the left, you'll have uh, filtering options by article types and simply select uh, meta-analysis and systematic review as the article types. And you'll only get these two types of articles as results. You can also go to Google Scholar if you're interested in non-biological related aspects. Say you're interested in some psychological experiments or interested in social sciences, go to Google Scholar, type in your question of interest and simply append systematic review or meta-analysis. You'll find uh, lots of these. Pick three and start discussing them in the community. I and my team hang out there, so we'd love to help you there. We'd love to discuss what you find out. And uh, I'm asking this challenge not in the spirit of just uh, theoretical curiosity, but in the spirit of helping you develop the habit of going and finding out meta-analysis whenever there is a question of great importance to you. And also to have a bit of skepticism to really find yourself how uh, skeptical you have to be uh, in terms of requiring a huge amount of evidence. And you should not be just believing any scientific 
uh, result that you come across. Uh, all right. Hopefully, this was a helpful cheat code. Bye bye.